Hello and welcome. So let's consider our case number three. Can deliver with uniform distributed load with a point load at the free end. All right. So you can see this is a uh, uniform distributed load and there's also a point load at the free end. All right. So we'll just be going straight uh, into calculating our shear force calculation. So let's start with shear force calculation. All right. So now the first thing we are going to do is we are going to calculate our shear force at point A. So our shear force at point A is going to be, you know, if you check your shear force at point A, you go to the right hand side, no force. The only force you see there is just this P. Exactly. So and don't forget, upward force is positive, downward force is negative. So here we are going to have negative P. Upward force, positive. Downward force, negative. All right. So now, the next thing is we are going to calculate the shear force at point B. So shear force at point B will be equals to, all right. Now, the shear force at point B, if you check shear force at point B, we have uh, a point load and a uniform distributed load running from this end to this end, all right. So here, yeah, we are going to have minus P. Then, now, we are going to convert this uniform distributed load to a point load. So if we do that, we are going to have W my, uh, multiplied by S is what? WS. And this WS, which is now a point load, is going to act at the center of this beam. Exactly. All right. So here yeah, we are going to have uh, a point load, which will be hurting downward. So we are going to have minus WS. All right. So we are done with the calculation of shear force. So the next one is bending moment. Bending moment. All right. All right. So many moment calculation. All right. <clears throat> so let's calculate the bending moment at the bending moment at point A. The bending moment at the free end is what zero. All right. So the bending moment at point uh, B now will be equals to all right. The bending moment at point B. If you stand at point B. We have uh, two force, exactly. The first one is this one, P, that is negative P, multiplied by what? S, because we are still using this condition. So we are going to have negative P multiplied by S, which is negative P, S, all right. And then we also have this uniform distributed load, which we have converted to a point load, which is W, S, which is going to be acting at what? So it's going to be this, let's say this is the center. So here is going to be x over 2. Here is going to be s over 2. So here we have ws acting at the center. Then multiply by what the distance it covers. So we are going to have minus ws multiplied by x all over 2. So this will be equals to, if we factor out negative, we are going to have negative into ps plus what? Plus ws squared all over what? All over 2. All right. So... Uh, we are done with the shear force calculation and the bending moment calculation. All right, so the next thing is to draw the what? The shear force and the bending moment diagram. So we'll be tracing all the points down. All right. So here is uh, the shear force line. Here is the bending moment uh, line. All right, so here we are going to have zero here, zero here, zero here, and zero here. Above this line is positive, below is negative. Above this positive, below is what? Negative. All right. So the shear force at point A now is negative P. All right. Negative P is just a load. You understand? So it's supposed to be a number because uh, we are still using uh, a letter here. Do you understand? So this is the negative side. So let's just assume this point to be our negative P. Negative P. All right. So that is negative P. So, and uh, at point B, at point B, we have uh, point B to be negative into, so let's factor out negative here. I'm going to have negative into P minus W S. All right. So if you do this, uh, P minus W S, uh, definitely, if you look, sorry, if we factor out negative, this is going to be positive. All right. Now, 
If we look at this, P plus WS, if we add this number together, it's going to be greater. It's going to be greater than what? Than just what? P. You understand? So if we add P plus WS together, it's going to be greater. All right. So definitely, and uh, don't forget there's a negative sign. They're telling you that it is at the negative axis too. So this negative into P plus WS must be greater than this. So this definitely must be somewhere around here. So it must be somewhere around here. So let's use this place. So this is going to be our negative, negative P, uh, sorry, negative into P. Purpose of uh, clarification again, uh, here we have negative P. So this is negative P here. And here we have negative into P plus what WS. P plus WS is going to be greater than what? Than P, exactly. And don't forget there's a negative here too. You get that. So what I mean by this is this. If we have a negative P here, definitely, let's say this from this point to this point is negative 50. If we add 50 with WS, let's say WS is 20. I'm going to have negative 70. So negative 70 will still come down. Definitely, uh, negative 70 will, will be greater than this. You understand? So this one will come down and this one will be somewhere around here. So this one will come down more than this one. That is just the point I want us to grab. All right. Now, all right, so for us to uh, connect the line now, don't forget, uh, here we have a uniform distributed load throughout. So now we are going to be replacing that with a what? With an inclined line. So we are just going to use an inclined line to connect the cool point. And we are done with the here for. All right, so uh, this is how to go about the uh, uh, shear force diagram. So we are going to have this to be negative. All right, so you can always shade. All right, so now, the next one is the bending moment. Let's go for the bending moment. All right, the bending moment at point A is zero. So this is our zero here. And the bending moment at point B is nothing but, look at this, if we add this number together, it's going to be a greater number, right? But negative side. So we are going to go down. So let's just assume that to be somewhere around here. So let's just take that to be somewhere around here. All right, so, and don't forget, if we have an uh, inclined line, we have, uh, if we have an inclined line, and for us to draw the bending moment, uh, since we are dealing with a uniform distributed load, we are going to replace that with a what? A, pa a parabolic curve. Exactly. All right. So we are going to have a parabolic curve here. So. All right. So this is going to be a negative. So I'll shade it. All right, so that is how to go about this uh, question. Uh, thank you.